in 30,000 years, Alpha Centauri will meet at its closest point to our solar system, reducing its distance from 4.5 light-years to just 3.5. While not a considerably close distance, the fact that in the future, Alpha Centauri will be one light-year closer than it is today is a unique opportunity to send exploration ships or even a fleet of spacecraft to establish a base in the star system closest to ours. But what technologies would be needed to accomplish that feat? How long would it take? And what will happen to people who venture to Alpha Centauri? If you want to know the answer to all those questions, stay with us to find out. All the stars in the night sky move around the center of the Milky Way, including the Sun and Alpha Centauri. But the stars closest to the Sun don't move in groups like a star cluster but move separately, each in different directions. That is why some stars are getting closer while others are moving away. Today, we know that Alpha Centauri is getting closer to the Sun, and its closest approach will be in about 30,000 years when both stars are only 3.5 light-years away from each other. This will reduce the distance between the two by one light-year, which would be hugely beneficial for future interstellar missions. The human race does not have the technology to make interstellar travel. However, our technology allows us to send artifacts out of the solar system, such as the Voyager probes, but the time is against us. The Voyager spacecraft took off from Earth in 1977, more than 40 years ago, and although they have been traveling non-stop for all that time, it will take several tens of thousands of years to reach the nearest stars if they arrive. Unfortunately, humans have the bad habit of dying before the age of 100, so planning trips of several thousand years is not an option unless, within 30,000 years, we have developed generational ships. A generational spaceship is one in which humans can live indefinitely, leading their lives as they were on Earth, being born, leaving offspring, and then dying. So astronauts have children, their children have grandchildren, and so on, so astronauts who leave Earth die on the journey, and their descendants are the ones who make it to the destination, in this case, it may be another star or galaxy. The problem with these types of spacecraft is that they don't exist yet, and we have neither the resources nor the technology to develop them, so it's not yet clear if it would be this type of spacecraft that would take us to the nearest stars. In the case of Alpha Centauri, some scientists speculate that a generational spacecraft is not required because when it is at its closest approach, it will be enough to build a spacecraft that is capable of reaching at least 10% of the speed of light to reach Alpha Centauri in just 30 years. Yes, 30 years is still a long time, but it is achievable with modern technology using nuclear pulse propulsion. In previous videos, we explained this type of technology and how to use it to reach Alpha Centauri quickly, taking advantage of the approaching gap we will have in 30,000 years. The advantages of this technology are that it would help us get to Alpha Centauri relatively quickly, it frees us from having to build a generational ship, and most importantly, it uses technology that already exists today i.e., nuclear fission explosions. So this is one of the most promising technologies of the next few centuries to reach the star closest to the Sun. The first to arrive at Alpha Centauri would undoubtedly be the robots created by humanity. No human has ever set foot on a planet other than Earth. However, our technology is already spread across several planets, exploration rovers on Mars, reconnaissance probes on Jupiter, and exploration missions in the far reaches of the solar system, among others. Although humans haven't been able to go beyond the moon, our robots have been there for years. It's no surprise that, in the future, robots and computerized machines will also be the first to reach other stars. They would have to be sent to explore all the exoplanets in the Alpha Centauri system long before the date of closest approach. If in the next century, humanity manages to develop spacecraft capable of reaching 10% of the speed of light, the spacecraft that goes to Alpha Centauri will arrive in just 40 years, that is, a time similar to that which the Voyager probes have been traveling since they were launched in 1977. So these are not crazy figures at all, if in the year 2100, we send a spacecraft to Alpha Centauri that reaches 10% of the speed of light using nuclear pulse propulsion, the spacecraft will be able to reach Alpha Centauri in the year 2140, sending us as much information as it can through electromagnetic wave signals. These signals would take 4.5 years to reach Earth, so we would receive the first images of the exoplanets of the Alpha Centauri system in the year 2144. 
Over the years, interstellar travel between the Sun and Alpha Centauri would become increasingly common, allowing us to improve significantly spacecraft technologies until finally, in the year 32,000, the human race would send the first fleet of human-crewed spacecraft bound for Alpha Centauri. Taking advantage of the approaching gap between the two stars, a mission would be launched to colonize the exoplanet or exomoon with the best conditions to host living beings. Before launching the first fleet of interstellar spacecraft, some adjustments will be made, installing bases on some of the exoplanets of the Alpha Centauri system where all the necessary infrastructure will be established for the arrival of the first humans. Those in charge of this will be robots managed with artificial intelligence, they will build laboratories, rooms, covered gardens, domes, and everything necessary for the next colony of humans. So, the astronauts in charge of making the trip would not go to an unknown place, but, on the contrary, they would have a fixed destination and a specific mission to establish a new civilization in Alpha Centauri. The astronauts chosen to find the new civilization on Alpha Centauri will be the representatives of all humanity, very talented, intelligent, and strong people who represent the best qualities of humans. The first interstellar travelers would know that their trip will only have a one-way ticket, as those who venture to the stars will never return to Earth because the travel time will take half their lives. Would you dare to take a trip to Alpha Centauri if you knew you would never see your friends and family again? Let us know in the comments. In the year 32,000, a fleet of 15 human crewed spacecraft, each with 10 astronauts, will leave the solar system for Alpha Centauri. These astronauts will represent all of humanity and establish the foundations of human civilization on another star. The journey will last 30 years, and most of the time will be spent maintaining the spacecraft and inhabited spaces full of animals and plants that will have the purpose of terraforming the exoplanets in Alpha Centauri A, Alpha Centauri B, and Proxima Centauri. Be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can improve them for you, the viewer. Plus, don't forget to subscribe to our channel by making sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss ANY of our daily videos. In the year 32,030, the fleet of spaceships will reach their destination, the Alpha Centauri star system. Once there, five ships will head to Alpha Centauri A, five more to Alpha Centauri B, and the remaining five will stay in Proxima Centauri. Each fleet will be on a mission to establish a colony on each star's most prosperous exoplanet. Very little is currently known about the exoplanets that orbit these stars. Still, perhaps in the future, we will be able to find an exoplanet or exomoon that has favorable conditions for the development of life and that can be terraformed so that new missions will be sent every year to prepare the planet for when humans arrive. For hundreds or perhaps thousands of years, Earth will send new fleets of spacecraft into the Alpha Centauri system from time to time to provide astronauts with materials and supplies that will allow them to build three new human civilizations outside the solar system. Likely, during all this time, humans will also disperse throughout the solar system, establishing new colonies on other planets, such as Mars or the moons of Jupiter and Saturn, to take advantage of the minerals and resources of the asteroids found in the asteroid belt. At this point in history, humanity will begin to take two very different paths, on the one hand, the humans who stayed on Earth to terraform and populate the entire solar system, and on the other hand, those who were sent to the stars of Alpha Centauri to establish new colonies there and have a life insurance in case something happened to the solar system where the Earth is located. In this way, each civilization of humans will progress according to the resources available to them and the needs they have. During this time, the communications between the Earth and the astronauts sent to Alpha Centauri will be constant. Since the messages take 3.5 years to arrive from one star to another, which is a relatively short time, it will be possible to have recent information on what happens in both star systems. The humans sent to Alpha Centauri will be autonomous, they will have all the resources and the best technology created by humanity to meet all their needs and they will have giant 3D printers to build houses protected from the solar radiation emitted by the stars. They will have biological chambers that contain embryos of all the animal species on Earth, as well as seeds and plants of all known species to grow and harvest their food. They will have machines that will allow them to reuse 100% of the water they carry and devices to generate water. From the resources they find, such as ice or gases from the atmospheres of exoplanets, Astronauts from the three stars of Alpha Centauri will also have the advantage of being able to help each other by sending resources from one star to another to establish faster interstellar trade, as the distance between them is much less than the distance that separates them from the Sun. 
the approach gap between the Sun and Alpha Centauri that will take place in about 30,000 years is not going to last forever. In fact, it will only last a couple thousand years. Once this gap is over, Alpha Centauri will continue its path around the galaxy and slowly begin to move away from the Sun. By the year 42,000, Alpha Centauri will cease to be the closest star to the solar system, and instead, the nearest star will be Ross 248, the second closest star will be Gliese for 45, and the third closest will be Lalan 21185. In the year 82,000 Alpha Centauri will be more than 6.5 light-years from Earth and will not be among the five closest stars to the solar system. So from that point on, travel between Earth and Alpha Centauri will be impossible for the technologies of the time. With pulse nuclear propulsion and reaching 10% of the speed of light, spacecraft will take more than 65 years to travel the distance between Earth and Alpha Centauri, twice as long as during the approach gap. A 65-year journey is bordering on the age limit of humans today, so it would be completely unfeasible to make this trip, as astronauts on these spacecraft risk aging and dying long before reaching their destinations. The only way to be able to make this long journey will be with generational spaceships, which will allow human civilization to have offspring during the journey to Alpha Centauri, but as we mentioned before, we still don't know if by this time we will already have this type of spacecraft. That is why the rapprochement gap that will take place 30,000 years from now will be the only chance humanity will have to establish a human civilization in Alpha Centauri, if we do not seize that moment, then there will be no other chance. As the approaching gap finishes, communications will become increasingly complicated, and when Alpha Centauri is 6.5 light years away, a message back and forth will take 13 long years. Therefore, even if the Alpha Centauri civilization wants to communicate with Earth, the response time between sending and receiving messages will be so great that it is likely that over time, both the humans established in Alpha Centauri and the humans on Earth will lose interest in communicating with each other, as they will be busy solving local problems such as providing resources for a growing population. Over time, each of the civilizations will go their own way. Humans on Earth will continue to populate the solar system in search of valuable resources and materials, likely sending new colonization missions to closer stars. The Alpha Centauri civilization will continue reinforcing interstellar trade between the three stars that make up the system, sharing resources and knowledge for population growth. Each civilization will begin to write its history. Time will pass, and it is likely that over the years, the Alpha Centauri civilization will become so independent that they will completely forget the humans of Earth. The oldest astronauts will tell stories of how they came from the stars a long time ago, from a distant world called Earth, and their grandchildren will listen to them, thinking that it is just a fantasy tale, that there should not be such a place, because everything they know is in Alpha Centauri, and they have no knowledge that life exists in other stars. In the future, the inhabitants of Alpha Centauri will know nothing that there was ever a planet called Earth from which the first inhabitants of their world arrived, and the inhabitants of Earth will know nothing of a place called Alpha Centauri, which was once the closest star to Earth. Both civilizations will continue to evolve and progress, each at their own pace, completely unaware of the existence of the other, and perhaps in some much more distant future, the truth of how life originated in Alpha Centauri will finally come to light, and the new generations will begin an intense search for that mythical planet from which they are supposedly all originated. A green and blue world with forests and oceans called Earth.